TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. By the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue to grow the family from Chicago to the UK. And, you know, don't forget, man, twitch.com is where you can catch a live. Usernames at the bottom of the screen. Don't forget, we also got Patreon. We post five days a week. And if we miss a day like we did today, we'll double upload the next day or do it on the weekend. Uh, this is Wendell. Wendell with the big 92,000 subs. Salute, man. I was here when he had, what, 15? He deserves it, though. He definitely deserves it. I could see Wendell having a million subs very easily. Migrant crisis. Has Ireland's kindness been exploited? Talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976. Allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. True. Didn't I not? Did I tell you not to grab me bad soy? Didn't I? So if anybody thought that I was... Hold on, wait a minute. We just started off with negativity like that? Overstating the division here in Ireland. This is the evidence of it. A front line of squad here. And broken glass everywhere. Yeah, this could be a trap. What is it? Wait, what's, what's happening? That was just the intro. I wonder if he runs into, um, peaceful, not peaceful, um, I wonder if they cross paths, have him and having a shocker. I don't even think they know each other. Greetings from sunny Dublin in Ireland. I want to introduce you to Colin, who is the Bog Trotter Ireland YouTube channel. You the go. face, the man behind it. Now, I'll explain a little bit first about why I'm here, and then I'll explain why I'm here with Colin. So, about six months ago, some of you may know, I put a video up from Dublin where I did a bit of a market hunt, got loads of vital supplies together, and gave them to a homeless person who was an asylum seeker. Now, I simply gave the necessities to that asylum seeker, that migrant, I don't think I've because seen that he was the most likable character I met that day. And surprising to me when I uploaded the video, there were a lot of negative comments saying that perhaps I should have given that stuff to an Irish homeless person. Well, the real answer for that is I didn't really come across as anybody that seemed as genuine as the chap that I gave it to that day. But Amongst all the comments that came, one that stuck out was from Colin here. And he said that although he enjoyed my videos, that he thought that I got it wrong in that video because the situation here is really complex. There are a lot of problems, a lot of division when it comes to the migrant issue in Ireland. So he invited me back and I'm here in Dublin today. It's supposed to be a really sunny July day, but it keeps coming and going. Thanks for inviting me back, mate. No problem. See, when do we be doing stuff like that? You know what I'm saying? Coming back. Okay, well, show me then. I'm going to slide back. You're going to show me what's really going on. See, I don't know what happened in that video, so I, I can't even speak on it, but... And just with regard to the weather, we are renowned <laughs> for having four seasons in a day. Yeah. You never know what the weather's going to be like, but you know that because you've been here before, right? I'm ready for it, yeah. But let's talk in more seriousness about the division that you've spoken to me about in this country. Tell us a little bit more about the situation here in Ireland in 2024. Right. So basically the figures will show that between 85 and 97% of uh, asylum seekers are illegal immigrants. They're destroying the passports on arrival or they're getting the they're getting coaches generally from uh, northern ireland down here to sign in in the uh, international protection wait they're destroying their passports wait where are they coming from uh accommodation services get fingerprinted eventually they will end up with housing they start off with ten in tents uh one of my issues is that they've stopped giving the irish tents and um, the irish are on the streets now are living in sleeping bags but these guys are coming in and they're all guys, guys, 
They're all guys, all the same age, breeding age you could call them, military style men. It seems very strange and it, and it brings up all sorts of conspiracy theories within the Irish community. The fact that what's uh, causing the ag aggravation here in its simplest form, we have uh, 14,000 Irish homeless, 4,000 of which are children and then untold amounts of hidden homeless which is people who could be sleeping on someone's sofa etc etc so we've a massive homelessness problem people living on the streets people dying on the streets who are living in the tents we were living in the tents till they stopped giving the Irish the tents although we have greatest uh, compassion and empathy for anyone seeking uh, fleeing persecution in war torn in war torn areas we feel for that we're okay with that but it's because these people are coming in illegally they're, they're fooling the system so they're not even coming in illegally. They're coming in with passport, with the proper credentials. Then once they land, they're tearing up their passports and posing as illegal, well, becoming illegal. They are really playing the system. That is a that is a playing the system type move. See, I see, see. See, this is why you come to Window to get educated. Window's gonna get take that next step. Window's channel is gonna proper make sure you, you know what I'm saying, broken down to you so you can understand it. Well, we have so many homeless here that aren't getting seen to. Some people could be 27 years on the housing list trying to get a flat, but these people are just walking in. We know they're illegal. We know they could be saying they're from any country, saying any age. Which they do. They say they're they say they're very young because they get better benefits, less chances of them being deported. So there is uh, there is instances of guys in the forties pretending to be seventeen. Is guys coming in and they're not going to I pass. They're not. How? What type of DNA strand they got? Forty pretending to be seventeen as a male. I don't think that's the government not even trying at that point. Getting fingerprinted. They're just dispersing into the community. We don't know their criminal histories, where they're from, but they have snuck in, working on the black market. We don't have the figures for them because we don't know how many are doing it. But this is what's ca causing the division here. It's the injustice. We, 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 the Irish, are now being basically treated as second-class citizens. We, we are not getting housed. We're not getting any of the luxuries that these people who aren't from war-torn countries are coming from. And... Yes, okay, so people are coming from non-war-torn countries and capping like they are from one and seeking asylum when they don't really need it. They just, they just want, they just want entry. That's petty. I, that's messed up, 100%. That's causing great aggravation and within, within all the communities. So we're going to hit the streets in Dublin today. You're going to introduce me to some of the areas you grew up in. Like you coming from a cool situation in your country and you just want to relocate? So you tear up your passport and pretend like you're an asylum seeker from a war-torn country? That's messed up. That is messed That's highly messed up. Like, think about that. Morally, that is messed up. And we're going to meet some of the Irish people who've got an issue with the way that Dublin has gone in 2024. We'll try and meet some of the people with that wonderful Irish spirit and hospitality as well. Snatching space and opportunity from people who need it. Well, and I'm going to try and delve deeper, dig deeper into what the situation is here in Dublin because the last time I came I know once again I will say it though I'm, I'm not a I'm not a player hater I'm not a player hater you can't hate the player you got to hate the game the game the way that they are set up they found a loophole and is being extorted dramatically and no one's doing anything about it like this is not any person's fault it's a it's a the it's it's the it's the upper echelon's fault, you know what I'm saying? The people in control's fault. Notice there was an edge, there was a bit of a rough and unsettled vibe. So now I've got a local with me who himself is very concerned about the state of things. Let's see what life is like, especially regarding this division within the community, within the society here in Dublin. Let's go.
Are you, like me, a complete unknowing nick? Pay the bills, man. I, I feel it. I feel it, window. I feel it, man. Hopefully, man, put me in, connect. <laughs> I was wondering why he skirted up like that. I was, hold on, what's what happening? I don't know what was going on. Parley, with code Wendell, when you click the link in the video description and pin comment. So the last time I was here in Dublin, six months ago, I was personally shocked at how edgy and dangerous even the centre where the tourists all visit is. And when I was talking to Colin, he said he'd take me down a couple of laneways, the notorious laneways of Dublin, because apparently these are dangerous places. So what was my observation like? Like, is central Dublin as dangerous as it felt to me last time? It's worse. It's worse. The crime stats, I, can, I, can be qu I, I can't be quoted on this, but as far as I remember, the, the crime rate has gone up 25% in, in the la since the first the last quarter of last year it's gone up 25 percent so people will of course straight away blame asylum seekers um because they are the the, the rise it's not an irish birth rate i'm not saying who it is at this juncture but, but pe some people are jumping to that some conclusion. people are yeah. saying that it's because of these new people coming in and in my experience the type of crime has changed. There was always violence here. There was, you know, we've no shortage of that. Uh, and we had our own troubles. Um, and it is direct, the streets can be rough, but that type of roughness has changed. Um, it's a lot more menacing. The people in Ireland don't feel as safe anymore. I wouldn't come down here as a, as a tourist. There was a Canadian murdered here a couple of, not, not, so, not this in land. This, not, not this not land. Not this land. My, last one is Canadian tourist. Something dodgy going on there, I don't know what it is. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah, Seems so. the camera. There's also a, a lane I've heard of called Harbour Court. <coughs> yeah, so we're going to walk over to Harbour Court now, which apparently is that dangerous that at one point in the last month or so, they were, the, the government here in Dublin, they were talking about actually closing the lane, but you're saying that that's not it, it happened yet. It, it hasn't been closed. It's been, it's been dangerous since I was a kid. Now, can we get up here? Not closed yet. So it was dangerous since I was a kid. Some people in your comments will go, ah, I've been there, it wasn't dangerous at all. As a kid, you wouldn't go here. I'm not gonna lie, these little back alley walkway things, what are these called? Gang, what do they call them? We call them gangways. But no, this is not, this is not a gangway, never mind. This is a little bit more, but like this is sketchy. I can imagine walking through this at night as a young lady you would not want to do it probably you would want to stay on the, the main streets um it was known when we had it when we had the dangerous the situation in november i think it was november when there was riots in the streets and the, the vehicles were set on fire here it was said that the gangs congregated in this area to to meet up but you'll sense you feel the atmosphere from this lane you, you feel it without saying so let's check it out uh, I, I would say in its in its history i would imagine all manner of dodginess has happened down here well you can see here folks this is o'connell street this is the very tourist center really along with temple bar of dublin and the laneway is just a block away are really dangerous areas they used to call it hatchet alley yeah well one of the things that's so so handy for someone who might be up to no good is the corner that we just went through it's it, there's three exits yeah so you could be stood right at that corner uh, in between the three the three exits and if someone comes down you just run out another one so yeah. unless you've got guards coming down the three lanes it's very similar to gangways but i don't think gangways gangways in chicago they don't connect like <laughs> like this massively they, they're like in between two buildings you know what I'm saying? Like this is a massive network of lanes where you can get lost and you know what I'm saying, be diabolical. There's nothing you can do. And that could be Garda or illegal acquaintances, couldn't it? It could, could be, be anything, anything, yeah. Anybody that's after you. But, but you can see them from so far away. Yeah. That's um you can just do a runner. Do you do you work in there, do you mate? In in that shop there? Where? You just came out that door there. We're well, just the hustle, we're yeah. just making a video about the lane because they were talking about closing it because it's quite a dangerous place. Have you heard of anything about that? Or? Yeah, they are going to close it. Do you know when they're going to close it? I'm not too sure. Not no. sure. It yeah. takes them a long, long time to get things done around here. Is it a pretty... Uh... 
My bad. So how would they go about closing this? Like, what do you do to close this? Like, pretty notorious place for illegal activities. Yeah. yeah. It is a very, very dangerous area. There's a lot of uh, addicts yeah. hanging around the lanes and addicts as well. They just they get very dangerous and very um, when they see people coming through, obviously, but stuff that yeah. they want, unfortunately. They try their best like to, to take have it. it. And normally, yeah. they do get it under circumstances, okay. which yeah. could be blades, bottles. Yeah. Whatever, unfortunately I am homeless 20 years and I am not in that game. I'd rather okay. sit down with a cup, as yeah. I call You do the homeless blog, don't you? Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Do I have your number and all? My phone is gone, my phone is dropped, so... Guess what Just... I have for you. <laughs> no you got way. some phones on you to hand out to people? Oh, paper. lovely, lovely. I so have... this is something I was going to um, jump... It's pretty dope. I didn't even know who this guy is until today. I didn't know he was doing all that. That's, that's a stand-up guy he with. Pinto Colin does carry phones, don't you? To hand out to homeless people, oh, like in this lady's situation. Nikita, is it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. and it, it just helps you stay connected no, exactly. with services and everything. Kids. Yeah. It's not for the services, okay. but to be honest, it's for my kids. Your family, three yeah. kids. Yeah. 20, 21, 18 and 8. Since I've met Colin, that was about two and a half months ago. Something like that. My phone was robbed with all my belongings okay. from Thank you so much. Colin, that's awesome, man. I think it's charged. Thanks. Pre charged as well. <laughs> Thanks, Colin. I hope you do forget it. It's not, I'm not looking for it. It's charged already. Yeah. So, do you, do you regularly bring supplies to people like Nikita that you meet? All the time. So, you you, you bump into her you know, regularly, you realise that she needs certain things. I know her from a few. I, I, I ask, I'll, I'll, I talk to these guys all the time. I don't mean to call you these guys, okay. but okay. I, I speak to homeless people, guys on the street, I should say, all the time. I never offer a phone, right? But I ask, can I take, now my secret's gonna be out, but I never offer, say I have a phone <laughs> for you. I, I say, can I take your number? And that's how I know. Now the secret's out. So Colin, I've just seen in the alleyway there that you were very empathetic with Nikita's plight, being homeless and having troubles of her own. What motivates you to have this empathy towards the people in the community that are struggling with homelessness and addiction? Well, so I'm, a, I'm a qualified addiction counsellor. I'm a pre-qualified psychotherapist. I've worked with the homeless for many years. Addiction I've worked with for many years. Um, I think most people who work, most people who work in the addiction field who aren't just doing it for money because it'd be a long time getting money and as a counsellor. I think most will have had some connection with addiction. So personally speaking, and I think I think my viewers know this, that I've, I have had, um, I've had issues with, do you want to go here? It might be a bit yeah, let's go through you. I have had, um, I've had issues with addiction. I am an alcoholic, but the thing is I don't drink. Yep. But I know I'm an alcoholic. Um, I never touch a drop because I don't like the person that makes me. Just because someone is, is an addict doesn't mean that their issues are all about addictions. It means they have an addiction issue and everything that everyone normal has. They have all the same problems. It's not just about addiction. Yeah. It's everything that led them into that, that it could be um, unresolved trauma from their childhood. It's, it's, it comes into it a lot. In terms of um, some of the substance abuse people I talk with, it's it's it becomes quite apparent after talking to him for a, as a one, on a one to one. Um, abuse in their youth comes up. I'd say nearly all the time. You put it far more eloquent than me because you're a professional. But I always say that some of the people I've met. I heard. Um, oh man, I don't. I forgot dude's channel, or where we even heard that. That dude was um, getting addicted to class A's on purpose just to show that it's all like a. Um, it's a choice. Is it, and like he was trying to prove that there's no such thing as addiction. Like he can, he can uh, overcome it without any problem. And and people are making a choice to be addicted. Well, anybody know who I'm talking about? I forgot what I heard. Like I seen him say it out loud. He had already started the process. They, they didn't stand a chance from the start. They were born into abuse, and so 
that later became self-abuse and negative habits. That's the way I see it from the yeah. people I've met you. If you plant two seeds and you put them in the ground, one of them you give loads of water, a little bit of fertilizer, compost, and make sure there's plenty of sun, and the other one you don't treat so well, it's, it, one of them is going to fail. If you put the two seeds there and give them the exact same uh, treatments, water, etc., etc., they'll grow the same. It is in the helping people, and it can be depressing as hell, like, it really can be depressing, but it's in the helping that you, you're, you're helping yourself. Your name is Lisa? Yeah, yeah. Lisa McEnroe, yeah. Yeah, and you, are you born and bred in Dublin? I am. Yeah, and how's life in Dublin these days? Shit. Why do you say that? <laughs> uh, the drug use, the, it's the gangs, um, the government, it's an awful lot, like it's not, it's the drugs and the government made me. Until six months ago, I hadn't been back for about 10 years. And I, when I came back, I was shocked to how much edgier yeah. it felt and that there was a friction in the society. Yeah. Where is this at? Like, I know it's in Dublin, but like this is, everywhere he's walked has been pretty nice. Dublin's look, look kind of nice. It looks really nice. Did you think that's you can a fair feel that yourself. estimation? Come here, as soon as you get off a boat or a plane, you can feel it straight away. Yeah. If the government could do something, could do more for the homeless, I'll be grateful. And that's being honest. Because I see good people out in the streets that don't deserve to be out in the streets. Hey. Didn't I not? Didn't I tell you not to grab me bad side? Didn't I? I'm fucking kidding you outside out that walking Do you want to have a wander around the corner? Yeah. yeah. So, um... Dude is having a terrible day. He's spazzing on the central employee. That's tough. <laughs> Apart from that, how is Dublin these days in 2024? Dublin, Colin uh, tells me there's quite a lot of friction. There is a lot of friction. Uh, there's a lot of tension at the moment um, regarding uh, immigrants coming into... Uh, 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 Dublin's a very small city. Uh, uh, Ireland in itself is a very small country. I mean, we're housing only 6 million people, like, as it is. So, I mean, most of them are not even Irish. Wait, there's six million people in in Ireland. I, th I feel like that's a lot for such a small little for such a small country. I feel like that is a lot. Do you know what I mean? There's a lot of Irish that immigrated, and like I mean, at the end of the day, Dublin as a city at the moment, it's um, it's changed. Yeah. It's so so I, I last visited six months ago. Sorry yeah, to interrupt yeah, you. No, go ahead. And. I hadn't been before then for about 10 years yeah. and I was shocked at how edgy it felt. Yes, like, yes, it was, do you think that's yes. a fair assumption oh, that's from a visitor? Fair, yeah, most of them, uh, of course, yeah, it's, it's, that's a very fair assumption. Yeah, of course you'd be edgy. Yeah, you'd notice things going on around you, feel the aura of people and, and there is bad energy. I mean, I mean, at the end of the day, it's a very hostile city. Very hostile. It's got more hostile now with the epidemic and, 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 and the immigration epidemic uh, problem as well. That's meant. The situations that's been happening, we're not used to as a people. Yeah. Because we, our, our kindness has been taken as a weakness. And that's our nature is to be kind to people. And and, 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 and that's all known. Hmm, maybe that's why I'm so kind. Paul. Uh, uh, documentary. Yeah, man. Yo, how's, how's Dublin in 2024? Dublin is beautiful. That's yeah, not, I'm not hearing beautiful. that from everyone. There's good and bad things. Dublin is Good, man, come to Dublin, Abibi. Yeah, yeah, see, there you go, there's a great example. Right? He's having a great time, great time with Zoe, he's having over here. Yeah, I'm, like, no, I'm not a racist person. It's not colour of skin or anything else, or is that a chill or anything else like that. But I'll tell you this, they come over with that attitude. Yeah, everything's great. Yeah, they're getting fucking money, they're getting free money. Sorry, of course, but they're getting free money. They're getting free house, they're getting house like that. Which seems to me, they're getting house. They're getting prioritised over Irish people. And there's people living in tents on the streets that are Irish and that need housed and that in hostels as well. Mom. Not gonna lie, that dude sounded like he might have been from the UK somewhere. Maybe not Ireland, I mean not Ireland. Uh, yeah, yeah, maybe not Ireland specifically, but for sure, like... Also, then, intense. So, what you need to do is get Irish people out of hostels and then put the fun people in. You need to house the Irish people first. Seen a lot uh, in the inner city, how it changed over the years, do you know what I mean? And, like, yeah, you're eating, eating over the last 
let's 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 play in the last five years. Shit's got hot. Shit's yeah. got real hot. Ireland was sold. Do you understand what I'm saying? There was it was sold to the banks. It was sold to it was sold to big shareholders. It was sold to like and I, and I, this is back in 2008. Yeah. You know what I mean? When the bill. Somebody in the background want another phone. Like the crash do you, do you think this is out. when, like, you had a lot of, like, I know, like Amazon and Facebook yes. came with their European yeah. headquarters to yeah. Ireland, lower taxes than yeah. in the UK? Yeah. I can only yeah. speak of that's yeah. where I'm well, from. That's, yeah, yeah, well, it's uh, literally the taxes are non-existent over here for them sort of companies. But do you think that those companies, like, moving to Ireland, did that bring jobs for Dubliners? Oh, not jobs, but it's only to a certain type of person. You have to be the code and you have to be into yeah. Tech, technology. Yeah, like so educated, educated, computer yeah. literate yeah. individuals. Yeah. Well, certainly, but yeah. maybe not for um, people not for where industries yeah, fell away exactly. and so yeah, on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. The vibe that I'm getting from most people I speak to, it isn't migration per se, it's just no. un, uh, like uncontrolled migration yes. of yes. people. Yes, Ireland actually, needs skilled workers yes, from overseas. Most yes, most certainly, that's true. Yeah, but at the same time, you have to understand that. You see, in other places, it's happened in France, it's happened all over in other places in Europe, where migrants are coming from uh, war torn countries and they're coming over and they're absolutely causing outrage. They're just going to random attacks, organised attacks as well, do you know what I mean? But the, the terror attacks then happen. Look how many we've had in Europe. Ireland hasn't been here like that yet, do you know what I mean? But, I just have a feeling that something's got something's going to give because where well, wires give uh, the way things are going right now, someone's going to get hurt very badly. And you've seen the way that they did. God forbid, no one would or something. They're popping up the tents all over, all over Dublin in the same places. Do you know what I mean? Look, it's, it's not going to be long before someone comes out or along and starts born in the tents. Do you know what I mean? Like, do you know what I mean? And, and stuff like that. And God forbid somebody's in one of them. Do you know yeah, what I mean? I Something's going to happen. Do you know what I mean? Something bad is going to happen. And then, then, that's when, that's when the problems are going to start. That's when you're going to yeah. get, like, foreign gangs again. Stuff like that. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Do you know what I mean? 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 Do you know well, hopefully we don't get well, to hopefully that. Hopefully we don't get to that. But yeah. I mean, look, at it, it, if the government don't step in and do something, you'll, you'll have like, we are just going to have gangs going, going around. Um, at the end of the day, uh, it's not all hate there for them. I mean, there is legitimate cases. There is Palestinian people that are coming over. They are fleeing born to They've been, they've been massacred over there. I mean, that in itself is a reason. So there's more of the people that are creating a false narrative of who they are coming in capping about their situations that that they that that's getting the anger take them in and we're one of the first countries to have to actually stand up and and in and worldwide um polit uh, stand up with a politician to condemn that's what i'm looking for to condemn what's going on over in israel the first country to stand up and condemn but um worldwide publicly that what they're doing is wrong, like, you know what I mean? So that was the tent, huh? This is, is this out of anywhere? Colin did ironically point out to me that the brand of the tents that are being given out to the illegal migrants, a trespass. He thinks that uh, maybe there could be a more suitable brand name for the tents that are given out, because <laughs> that might infuriate people who are uh, yeah, slightly uh, irked by the situation. So I'm not sure if it is true that the tents are being taken away from the Irish homeless, but at the same time being given out to people that arrive illegally, to migrants. But I can say that on that side of the river, I have seen a lot of temp tent encampments with pretty fresh looking tents, but on this side of the river, there are people sleeping homeless, some with sleeping bags, and some without even that, but no tents. So I'm not sure, as I say, how much truth there is in those reports of the disparity between Irish homeless and migrant homeless and a tent situation. But if that is the case, then obviously that's disturbing. But if you know any more about it, folks, Please put in the comments below whether there's any truth to these stories. It's 
so you take horses around and you give people shaves? I just do the shaves, the lads do the horse and carnages. What happens when the horse pulls? And you mess up his moustache. Oh, then it hasn't happened yet, but he's looking to be the first. Okay. Come to Dublin outside the Guinness storehouse, have a horse ride, get a shave. Yeah, nice job done. She's my friend's best, she's the best horse I've ever met. This is look. Bailey. That's pretty cool. I see people doing that all the time, but I ain't never seen it like in no, nobody video though. That's pretty cool. How old's yeah. Bailey? She's 11 years old. Hello, sweetheart. She's beautiful. She's a blessing for um, Oh, she's beautiful. She's yeah. just really lovely. She is. So, have you you've been like taking horses around? Is this the Liberties? This is the heart of Liberties. Yeah, bro. yeah. This is the heart of Liberties. Like, you can't get any more Dublin down here because you're in Dublin, eh? Part, part, the Liberties meaning, the old lip meaning of it yep. is there was the poor part back in the days. It was the poor part. But as you can see now, all it is is building, it's booming. It's booming now the city is. Very different. Set, exactly. No recession, no more. Yeah. But uh, yeah, this is what we do. We just take people on tours up to see, obviously, around we can take a look at taxi service on the horses. But they have this in Chicago so much. The horse and carriage joints now. I mean, they've been having that for like 10 years in Chicago. I never got on one, man. I rode a horse, surprisingly. Well, it's not, this is not the living we live. This is the lifestyle we live. Yeah. Like, the lifestyle we live is with the horses, we're looking after the horses every day, but it's a pleasure to get them out when we can on the weekends, just to get them out, especially on a carriage, and if you're making a few quid, that's all the better. Because yeah. to get, it, it helps along the way. Because everything on horses is built, it's all like, it's hard work put into it, you know what I mean? Yeah, but I can imagine, yeah. It is. Because we have a lot, of, it's, it's literally, a, it's a full-time job. Every day, like, there's no days off. Yeah, yeah. Christmas morning, you're The horse home. needs looking after every, every day, all day. Needs, look, like, you need to look after the horse more than yourself. So the horse is sick of y'all. Are we going to take it for a spin? Of course you can. Absolutely. That's you serve Guinness as well on it? No, because I had customers on a few minutes ago. Okay. And the, I, I stopped at the Liberty Bell for them, so they got their... Whatever you got Maybe there. we'll stop for a pint for me as well. Oh, let's yeah. go, let's <laughs> go. I'll ask the owners if you want to jump up. He's a 12 year old. He probably doesn't want to get up. <laughs> yeah. He probably will want it. Where's Todd? Ask him if you want to come with me. You want to come with me? Window on a carriage. You're coming on a little spin, son. I'll show the lights around. Come on, you can join if you want. I'm going to talk to the lights. Come on, then I'll put your nanny man. <laughs> Mom, Don't fast. His father owns all the horses. So this horse is as old as you, pretty much, yeah? It's exactly the same age nearly, isn't she? Yeah. She's 12 yeah. years of age. How long have you been um, Slow down doing the talking. horses? Uh, since I'm like since five. Since you were five? Yeah. It's amazing, mate. You're skilled. Oh, yeah. He's... This is crazy. This is crazy. I feel like you need like a permit to do this in Chicago. You need some type of... Clearance and I feel like they're just outside with it. <laughs> Drive them since he's five, but he's been in them since he's born. Yeah. Been in them since he's born. Does he yeah. ride them too fast? I'm getting the impression yeah, you're telling him to a, slow he's down. He's a butcher. That's yeah. what I call him. A butcher when he goes too fast, they're a butcher. Now right now where we are, we should have went left some, but we go that way anyway. All we are now, this is all the liberties, right? As you're saying about the heart of Dublin, all these buildings, these are for the air. Uh, these are the corporation owned houses. These are for the like Years ago, as I was saying to you, the Liberty is the old part for the, the poor part. This is literally it. I don't think we ever got an interview on a, on a horse and carriage. Wendell is really trend-setting. Like, this is different. This is for, like, residential areas where you go renting and it's cheap rent and stuff like that. Instead of paying for your, like, a house two blocks down, three to th 2,000 to 3,000 every month, they are going to be paying rent. Yeah, yeah. That's just the way things are yeah. around here. Because they're so close to the city. It's a Dublin really expensive place exactly. to live these days. Years ago, actually, the Guinness family were very good to the uh, to the walkers. Slow down from there's a woman on the road. Give me the rent. Can't drive his own horse, I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead, madam. Whenever you're ready, love. You take your time, love. Do you want me to go, yeah? Go ahead. Sorry about that. That's all right. You have to go slow on the horse. Boys will be boys. Look, he think it's funny. He giggling. You have to go fast. It's not a Formula One car, mate. Walk on, my girl. Walk on easy. That's the way you what talk. What are we about. doing? A, an hour? What? Yeah, what are we doing? An hour? <laughs> yeah, I'm mounting some. But yeah, as I was saying, these are for the less privileged people. But as I was, And these houses, these were all built years ago, over 200, 300 years ago, for the walkers in the Guinness Hop store. Like literally, so they'd be close to the close to the storehouse. Who would live in these houses now? Now, private owners and stuff like that. These so, private owners and yeah. rent. Yeah, I can hear the horses trot is a lot uh, slower now. 
He was moving, I ain't. Mean. <laughs> but if you did live, if you did own one of them, trust me, you're bleeding well off. You have a few quid, you'll have to have a few quid. This used to be a local bar for our locals around here, always, every night. I feel like it's moving again. Here come a speed bump now, slow down. Darts and all, they used to have a darts team. Ever since COVID happened, never reopened. Yeah. So I, have, I don't know what's going to happen to it now, to be honest. They actually, there was a lot COVID closed down a lot of stuff worldwide. A lot of stuff never reopened. Uh, le illegal people trying to stay in it. Oh, like set off yeah, yeah, exactly. He set off fur and all. But it wasn't nice. And years ago... <laughs> Wait, where'd the kid go? I just noticed the kid is gone. <laughs> when the Guinness walkers of a Sunday, here's what used to happen when they were based up in Guinness is walking there, as I was telling you. Most of the cottages around here are for the Guinness workers. Yep. One second, boss. See the Holy Mary statue down there? Jump out of that, boss. Mark, one minute, brother. See that statue? They used to all gather around there, families from all around Ireland and yep. England as well. If you were from England, that's where they used to come and pray if you were Catholic. In a regular day, when you got the horse, yeah, how many rides would you do around the uh, liberties? To be honest, not that many in the summer because there's so many carriages up there. But um, some days you get none. You wouldn't get any, like, do you understand? And then some days you get like, probably three or four or four. Is this all you do? Is this your main job? Or do, do you do like other things as well? Or Yeah, I fit windows and doors okay. for a living. So could you could you not rely on this full time? You could if you really wanted to, but... but you'd have to hustle have a big stuff. Exactly. You'd have to be buying and selling horses all the time and stuff like that. You can't depend on a, a car carriage for your living. <laughs> Go on there, girl. Bro trying to speed him up. Like, slow down. You making noises. You chirping. Like, chill. We strolling through town. We not, you know what I'm saying? Let's let's keep it at a gentle stroll. Get on. That's my woman. You're doing a grand job there, mate. Oh yeah. Hi. About to him. About yeah. to him. It's the boss. She is, she's the best mare I ever drove me like. Really? She really is. She has the most uh, manners ever. The old Dublin Wall, years ago when the Vikings took over, there was a there was a wall around the whole lot of the Liberties. And if you weren't in at a certain hour at night time, you were left locked out. Yeah. Because they uh, didn't want any intruders or invaders getting in. Easy, my little woman. As you see, she, she walks you around for me. She does it all herself. She finds it easy girl. as well. Ah, it's this carriage with the bearings and the wheels. Once the carriage is rolling, it's harder to stop. How yeah. old were you when you had your first Guinness? I don't want to say that. <laughs> so, Paddy. I'm not going to lie, that last scene where they, the horse had to be going like 40 miles an hour. Look at this. Had your first Guinness? I don't want to say that. Bro's hair is blowing in the wind. Like. <laughs> so, Paddy, if people want to come and have a horse ride with you, yeah. where they come to the corner of the Guinness store here. Come to here. You normally here? Take me, I'm gonna put me here. Uh, what's up? My YouTube channel on the corner of your channel of your little page, if you want. Yeah. And it's gonna take me details from there. Or as you said, you're at the Guinness Hop store. There's carriages here daily. Literally, it's like a living for some people, as we are speaking about. It's it's a daily routine for for obvious reasons for people with horses. But I'm not gonna be here every day of the week, so you won't find me here on the corner every day. But you will find some people. Plus, there's another little rank that they have over at Stevens Green Park. If you ever want a horse and carriage right there, you can go over there too. They can take you around on nice little scenic routes. James Keogh Haircuts. I haven't got the page. James Keogh Haircuts. James Keogh K E O G H. Yeah. James like Andy Keogh, the football player who used to play. Spell it one more time. James Keogh Haircuts. James Keogh K E O G H. Spell yeah. James. Like I don't know what he spelled. Like Andy Keogh, a football player who used to play football. And he recognized some of them letters. Yeah, yeah, there you go. And you're here giving the uh, the horse drivers yeah, a good uh, barnet cut, yeah? yeah. Nice yeah, fade. You don't mind me filming that, That's a serious well, fade. You've been in the sun. Oh, You've yeah, been in the sun, yeah. Yeah, Guinness is sun. Yeah. <laughs> you're looking sharp, mate. So if anybody... Tan on the back of that head. Will you give anyone a haircut here? Anyone. And if you want to fly me to America, I'll take that too. Sweet. <laughs> Service update, the weather has shit the tin here in Dublin. So, Colin's gone back to sort himself out of his house, and I'm on my own, I'm lost in Dublin for a couple of hours. But, fear not, for somebody else that I can knock around with for a bit. Danny on his places, my mate that does the pub reviews of the dodgy pubs, oh, he's okay. in town, and he wants old Wendell to show him a couple of great pubs, not the ones in Temple Bar, on the tourist trail there. So I brought him first of all to the Palace Bar. 
Danny, hey, mate. how's things, mate? Not too bad. You enjoying yeah. Dublin? Uh, yeah, go get some half decent Guinness in. We'll yes. definitely. Not even gonna lie, man. I can't wait till I get to the UK. Anybody hit me up to make some content, I'm sliding. Don't even worry about it. <laughs> Here I come. I'm just gonna have an unlimited litany of videos, man. I don't even know if litany was the right word for the. You know what I'm saying? But you can get dodge, some of those. Dodgy pubs. Keep ourselves away from Temple Bar, mate. Come to places like the Palace Bar and Bows here in the town centre. Why? It's a bit moist, so we best uh, skip in and get a pint. Let's go for it, mate. Look at that, mate. Yeah, there you go. Some people say, oh, it needs to be right on the heart, but I think it's got too much of a head on the heart. I think it needs to be no, right I've, uh, My opinion, here in Dublin, the more cream, the better. Reckon? Yeah. She's a creamer, mate. Hey, window, chill. You haven't split the Jeep? It's got a nice sweetness to it. You see, honestly, compared to like back in. This is going to be like one of my second videos, though, getting a Guinness in the UK. Because I need to, I need to see if there's a difference or not, and I'm almost positive that it will be a difference. He talking about is a little sweetness. Well, I ain't never tasted that. England or Wales or Scotland, it is like a different drink. We've had a pint in the palace, yep. which is so it's going to be different in England, and it's going to be different in Ireland, and it's going to be different in America. All right, well, hundred meters that way, it was a good pint. But as we drank a bit more, yeah. it started to get a bit thin, um, not as creamy as us, you know. Probably had better in Manchester. Yeah, yeah really? Taste. You've had uh, a creamier pint in, in Manchester? Yeah, definitely. Okay, well I'm telling you mate, but both... The vernacular is crazy right now. <laughs> Bows here, with a big clock on, is pretty much the best Guinness in the central city. Well, it looks like there are places drink. just out that do probably an even better pint than this. This is one of the best pints of Guinness yeah. right. you'll have anywhere so, in the world. So rate it out of 10 before you go in, and then rate it out of 10 when you have it. I'm expecting eight and a half, nine out of 10. Eight and a half, nine yeah. out of 10? I'll no. be disappointed if it's not an eight and a half. It is. Other high regards. See, I would have to go with somebody that really knows Guinness because I, apparently I don't know nothing. I, I don't even really like Guinness like that. Like on um, St. Patty's Day, we make a drink called Irish Car, blah blah blah. Um, they're good then. It's what? Ooh, my bad. Oh, Great. Oh, so if, it, if it's anything that less than eight and a half, you're paying for it now. I can already tell, mate. It's going to be way better than the palace. There we go. Hold it eight and a half, nine out of ten. How old's the pub look? How old is it? Yeah. Uh, 1850. 1850. Yeah. So is the, is the cellar, the cold room, is it directly below the bar here? Uh, it's not directly. Oh, so you pour it a little bit, then let it rest, and then start again. But it's not too far from us. Yeah, because yeah, yeah. I would imagine, because the, you yeah, know, the best the pints you get. Flow, yeah. yeah, but yeah, it's, it's close to us, not direct. Yeah. Some people would have it directly. Okay. Underneath or even, Yeah. Do you know? But yeah, it's pretty close. Yeah. See me, I'm impatient. Like, do you gotta wait for this to settle? Like, I just be trying to turn up. Mm -hmm. best one had, trust me. So, in, in, yeah. in my experience, I've been here before. Yeah, um, oh, you've been in here. This is the best pint of Guinness I've ever had. Brilliant. We are going to Grave Diggers later as well. That doesn't which matter. Which has got a good. I know that pub. You know it, yeah. <laughs> I know it. You think it's better here or Grave Diggers? Well, come on. You know what you've got to say. Yeah. 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 I've never, yeah, I've exactly. never had better than this pub. So. There you go. Brilliant. Yeah. Like What's the price for a pint as well? Well, as far as my knowledge is, I've never had better than King's Pub down the street in in uh, Sunrise, ooh, Sunrise, Florida. Uh, it's six ninety. Same as me. Same. Is it your okay, round? So it's, so it's free. He never, it's free free. He never gets his wallet out. You never. I would never. I'd never go to like. I've never ordered this out though. I bankroll these videos, don't I? <laughs> I think this is one of the best points of Guinness. What did you say out of 10? What did you say out of 10? I'm expecting a 9. It did settle nicely. That's gone up. It was 8.5 outside, yeah. but now we've looked at it, it's gone up to yeah. 9. Oh, okay. Get it down your, uh, down your chops, right? Right on the pint line, alright. Yeah. <laughs> 9 out of 10. <laughs> Even they're laughing at you. Alright. Uh, How is it? 
No, I say it's an eight and a half. Eight and a half. Eight and a half. Okay. It slides down though, as you say. It does slide down. Okay, well, slow down now, Wendell. To be honest, I'm we still got about nine minutes left, man. Actually, when you have a bigger goal. <clears throat> you know what? That's a, that's a annoying to me. Great lacing, sticking to the glass. Every single pub that I go in in Ireland, the bartenders are really on point, they're really professional, they're really hospitable, and you won't get better service in the world. Best pubs in the world, mate. we only been in two. What do you think of Bowes, mate? Banging, mate. Great pub, great Guinness, absolutely wonderful, friendly. He not cold. I've just seen, I've just seen his breath. Go back. I've seen your breath. You're not cold. You don't need no jacket. Bang it, mate. Great pub. Great Guinness. Absolutely wonderful, friendly service. They couldn't help us enough in terms of like putting a list together for Danny's video. Yeah, we've got about, they give us like six pubs. Probably won't be able to do them all because I've got to fly back. But you can do them after I leave. You can do them all if you want it, mate. It's a great pub. Anybody that visits Dublin, you should go to Bowes for a pint. One of the best pints of Guinness you'll ever have. Some of the best service and most welcoming staff you'll ever meet. And it's right here in the centre on Fleet Street. Right, no trip around the famous pubs of Dublin would be complete without a trip to the famous Grave Diggers, which is quite a far way northeast of the city centre. But weather's definitely shit the tin, so we're gonna have to snuggle up by the fire, mate. Grave Diggers pretty much has accepted. What was that, NBA Young Boys bar? Why? Because I know NBA Young Boy got Grave Digger Mountain. What's this? By so many people. You can see the queue out. Look at the queue outside. Look that's at that. Not, that's not the That's the Grave Diggers. It no. is, mate. I've seen videos. No, it's accepted as the best pint of Guinness in the world. I've wanted to come here for a long time. Oh, really? I've never made it. Danny doesn't understand how profound this experience is going to be. He's just wandering up like he's going for a pint. This pub's like this all the time, mate. Why is the queue in it? I'm feeling a bit spiritual, a bit emotional. It's starting to piss it down. Let's get in Grave Diggers and have the best pot of Guinness that man has ever created. That's the line? What a place. Oh, this is a place, this, mate. This is a place. Come on, mate. Oh, yeah, you in trouble, buddy. Had on a Guinness, <laughs> Guinness, uh, shirt. <laughs> playing around in here oh uh, yeah grave digger okay and he just poured them by the dozen like that? <laughs> This is not allowed in America. You cannot go outside and drink like this, but salute. Yeah, uh, mate. Let it sound. You're just on the side of the street. That's tough. Oh, that's for your nature's yeah. fucking shelf. Nice backdrop of uh, all the dead people who've sucked too many of these. How do you feel about? It's a menace. <laughs> just about to consume the greatest part of Guinness, but mankind's for some reason, created. For some reason, I think you, you probably put it in my head when I went in there. I've got, I have got this vision of that. It's probably going to be a ten out of ten. It's just what I've been told. But I'm, I'm, I'm expecting. <sighs> I thought they all tasted the same until I really started. You know what I'm saying? Drinking it. Like I've tried a couple of them. I've tried a couple on TikTok. I don't know if y'all follow me on TikTok yet. Links down in the description. I've tried a couple of them and. I gotta say, they they are much better out the tap than in the bottle. Um, that's all I know, though, as far as now. Expecting great things? I feel like I could be really let down, I don't know. I feel like I'm just always thinking of the worst. But it's, uh, it's looking well. It's looking well. It is looking well. It is looking well. Oh, that's um, it's got a velvety it sticks to the palate. That does. And how do you rate it? Because people say it's the best part again. It's not just in Ireland, but in the world. How do you rate it? 
Will you tell me for my for my viewers what you think about the Grave Diggers Guinness? It's the atmosphere. Yeah. It's the atmosphere. It's the it's tradition. It's unique. Yeah. It's a good pint. Yeah. I'd recommend Mulligan's. In Mulligan's the in the town, yeah. Yeah, John Mulligan's Pool Bag Street. Well, you, you must come out and drink. Yeah. yeah, that's where I go to drink. Yeah. They do the it's not the best. Well, what do you rate it, Wendell? Proper pour there. It, it's good. Okay. I will say, I've been saying this to Danny, it's his first time in Dublin, I've been here a lot of times, and once you've drank Guinness in Ireland, you can't drink it, or anywhere you can't enjoy it anywhere else, for sure, yeah, you agree? Yeah. yeah. And the thing is, they have to clean the lines at least once a week, it's a bit more He doesn't even sound like he's from Ireland. Involved, my understanding is, than cleaning it for regular beer. Yeah. So Is he from America, this guy? Oh, it's uh, you go in the states and it's. Uh, yeah. You know, you know, you're getting this quite well. Yeah, yeah you do yeah. know you're getting this quite well. Okay, folks, so we're now in an area of Dublin called Kulak. I think I've pronounced that right. I'll put it on the screen below. And this has been a hotbed of anti migration protests over the last week or so. From what I understand, the Irish government have decided that they want to house some of the illegal migrants, asylum seekers, for want of better terms in a building here in this part of Dublin and consequently a lot of people who don't agree uh, with that it. they're here and there's been a lot of flare-ups every night so let's get as close as we can could be a bit dodge let's have a look for those of you that probably thought I was overstating how divisive this issue is in Dublin at the moment this is the hotbed of the flare-ups of some rioting that's been happening. You can see here in this probably normally quite sleepy, down-to-earth suburb of Dublin, that at the moment there are nightly riots here with disagreements between the Garda and the... So as an American, when I come to the UK, I gotta walk around with my passport. I can't just show a Florida ID. I gotta actually walk around with passport because that's the only thing that's gonna verify anything. Right? Am I correct on saying that? Because I don't know. Locals and people that don't want the migrant accommodation facility here in this area. You don't need ID in the UK. All right, <laughs> never mind then. So if anybody thought that I was overstating the division here in Ireland, this is the evidence of it. A front line of squad here, and broken glass everywhere. Are you editing? It's kicking off? Yeah, this could be a trap. Wait a minute, Look, why is this happening? Look, it's, it's going on once. Yeah. Or, uh, Just simmering, ready to go. Yeah, yeah. It's going gonna, it's gonna to kick off. Got the choppers out and everything. Jeez. This is a huge issue over there, man. This is this is like a lot of people put down videos. For this. It's such a disturbing sight to see in a peaceful, free nation in 2024. Yeah. And how quickly it can escalate to that. D did you find that disturbing? Yeah. Yeah. So if I could just say to you, this is nothing compared yeah, to that. Yeah, from the stories you told me the other night. But yeah. it still has, has the same hopeless feeling. It's like there's women sat in the wall, wall going, I'm not moving because why should I move? I'm not, I not live here. Why should I move? Yeah. The newspapers are, are, are uh, all saying that our politicians are commending the Garda and saying what a brilliant job they're doing. Garda is just the police. How defensive they were, but this isn't defensive. This is offensive. What, what I uh, experienced the other day was offensive. They were they were charging. We weren't. We were peacefully walking down the street. Uh, yeah, I seen that on um, having a shockers video. They was charging for sure. I seen it with my own two eyes. I was dang. They charging them like that. And they were on the attack. It was no de-escalation, only escalation. Yeah, it in it that way. Folks, imagine living here. This is a normal housing estate in the northern suburbs of Dublin. 
probably 20 minutes bus ride from the city centre. Imagine you're here with your family, your kids, Friday evening, they've just got back from school, probably near to the school holidays, and for every evening, for the past four or five, five evenings, like the locals have told me, there's helicopters above, riot police everywhere, projectiles, bricks, from that would piss me off. Mm -hmm. Bottles, burnt <coughs> out buildings and cars in 2024 in Dublin, Ireland. We've escaped past the perimeter of the guarders and the riot police, and I'm on my way back into Dublin city centre. The relative calm, you know, I've, I thought there was some unrest in the centre today, but then I've come up here and it's different gravy. Colin, I yeah. want to thank you so much for showing me around, oh, mate. No I've seen an insight into a shocking divisive side of Dublin which I wasn't quite privy to last time and uh, I'm glad I kind of understand the picture of what's going on here yeah. a little bit more folks please check out Colin's channel it's called Bog Trotter Island I'll put a link in the description below Appreciate it. don't let these troubling scenes and some of the stories you've heard put you off coming to Dublin. It is a fantastic city, one of the most- I do think I will be coming to Dublin, if I'm being honest. Most welcoming and hospitable cities in the world for visitors. With a I got some stuff I need to try there. The best part of Guinness you'll ever have and some wonderful people. That's for sure. Plus, you know what I'm saying, maybe I can find my fam there. You know, you never know. TLO, leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post, I'm gone.